Okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, so getting started with the slideshow. Flipping over to two. It's kind of the order of business that we'll run through. Uh, February is typically the elections for 2023 officers. Um, so we'll run through that on the first slide, who the nominees are. Uh, each position only had one nominee, so it should be a pretty easy election, unless anyone wants to run at last moment. And then we can have, I don't know, like an open mic standoff or um, you know, a, a thumb wrestling match or something to determine it if there's any last minute nominations, but that'll be the big order of business for tonight's meeting. Uh, we've got Phyllis here in person for a treasurer update, Sally on Zoom for her last secretary update, um, some information about formation repair projects with the Bureau of Land Management, talking about River Blitz. Uh, Michael Moffitt will not be here with us this evening, uh, but he did have a ridge walking project last January that maybe someone can speak to um, and then we got some some op opportunities coming up with new trips and member news and different uh, weekly things going on so first order of business february elections for 2023 uh, got the list of nominees here that was determined uh, at last month's meeting uh, myself for president uh, hunter klein for vice president phyllis is the long-standing treasurer uh, and then Tristan Gleason running for secretary. Um, so is everyone here uh, in person at the Nickery building uh, in, in support of these nominations? Any objections from the room? All right, anyone on the Zoom link uh, joining us from a distance, uh, any support or objections that you'd like to voice uh, at this moment? I support the officers that are presented. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for that. Just the thumbs up from Sally as well. Going once, going twice. Sorry, <laughs> I'll be sure to double check with everyone one final time uh, via kind of email communication um, and just kind of confirm. But uh, as it stands right now, um, these are your 2023 officers. So congratulations. So all four of us here in the room. So that's an exciting, exciting thing for the moment. All right. So with that being said, uh, I'll pass it over to Phyllis if there's any sort of update from the treasurer. Okay, last month we sold like three t-shirts and collected dues and I had put in, I had $100 to put in the bank. So we now have $3,233.67. and $30 of that is cash, and I've collected dues tonight. The t shirts are 20 bucks each. Uh, t shirts are $20? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so just a, a quick update from Phyllis, uh, the Pecos Valley Grotto after some t-shirt sales, which are $20, uh, $5 dues that's been paid of recent. So we currently have $3,233.67 uh, in our account, $30 of which is cash. So uh, the monthly reminder, as always, that if you haven't paid your dues for 2023 yet, so $5 cash, you can bypass a coffee or a, a, you know, a pint of your favorite adult beverage for one night and be good for the Pecos Valley Grotto for the entire year. So constant reminder for that. And hopefully we'll have some projects and ideas and um, you know, maybe fundraisers and whatnot to put that, that money to good use later on in this year. Um, that wrap up everything you got, Phyllis? Yeah, that, that covers everything that, that you had? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll pass it off to Sally. Uh, if you have anything uh, officially, your last uh, presentation and last meeting as the official treasury. So I just wanted to say a quick thank you uh, for always joining us, whether it's in person when you're here in town or via the Zoom link uh, when not, and you know, offering your contributions and hard work. And I think I can speak on behalf of the entire Pecos Valley Grotto for that. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Um, I. I must admit I am in town right now. I just completely forgot that the meeting was today. Um, so I don't have the right computer with me and thus I don't have my notes from last meeting. Um, all I remember really though is that there is an election tonight. <laughs> so 
congrats, guys. That's all. It was indeed an election, which is good. Uh, and you know, a lot of this stuff the last few months uh, is just kind of like um, kind of repeated some project proposals and ideas that get talked yeah. about in later slides. So um, thanks for always keeping track of that. Thank and you, hopefully, Anthony. Hopefully, we get to see you before you leave town again. All right, so moving on, just wanted to give a quick uh, kind of notes. I know this is one of the talking points at last month's meeting, uh, just kind of streamlining communication because we do have so many new members of the last few months and also some old members that want to continue to participate and uh, in different ways folks access information. So uh, I did successfully create a Pecos Valley Google group, uh, which uh, ideally I'd like to use to kind of streamline the email communication. Uh, I did source names uh, and invites from the original PBG mailer. Um, so if you got the PBG emails of old, uh, you should have gotten an invite to join the Google group. Uh, if not, let me know uh, whichever way you prefer or your preferred email address, and I'll be sure to add that. Um, one quick note about the Google group. Uh, I know initially a lot of the invites were kind of time sensitive. So if I sent it, uh, say a week ago and you haven't looked at it yet, the invitation may have expired. Um, so just let me know if that's the case. Uh, and then also a lot of the invitations went to folks spam email. So uh, be sure to check that. I believe once you accept the invitation, mark it not as spam, then all the other PVG emails should go right to your inbox as normal. It seemed to work pretty good so far for those that I was able to successfully add. And I know there were some folks that uh, weren't on the PVG email that I was able to add to the Google group that are successfully receiving the messages. So if you have any questions or issues or, or comments or feedback about anything communication related, don't hesitate to let me know. So I want to make sure everyone's getting updates and um, yes. Of that like 120 names that were on there, how many actually responded? Uh, I think when I checked this morning, there were 32 members of the Google group. Okay. Um, so certainly still a long way to go in getting everyone caught up to speed. So uh, I will not disband the old PVG email just yet. Um, say like maybe by midsummer is my goal to like phase that out and have everyone uh, you know, into the Google group, which should give everyone plenty of time uh, to, you know, work out any technological uh, glitches that may happen. So I know everyone's got different levels of tech savvy and, and so forth with that. Um, so like I said, if you have any questions about that, let me know. Uh, in the meantime, the Google group will have a uh, communication being sent to it. I'll still use the PVG email for the next few months. Uh, and then I've always, there's the Facebook updates. I know not everyone's a member of the Facebook, uh, but that's still a great way to communicate uh, for those of you on that. Um, and then also the YouTube channel recently got access thanks to Dave Brumbaugh about two months ago. Uh, so now these meetings that are being recorded and these presentations are going to be shared with everyone. So if you're not able to join in person or on Zoom the day of, uh, plenty of time to, you know, get filled in on meeting updates and check out the presentations for reference, you know, at a time that's convenient for you. Uh, does anyone, whether in person or, or on, online, have any questions about communication? I uh, have not worked on the web page yet. Uh, it is on my to-do list to uh, reach out to both Colin and Angelina, were names that were, were floated to me that had that. So that's kind of, within this next month, they'll work on that as a project. And, and then hopefully there'll be a web page and we can update that with new officer information. And I think there's a calendar on there as well that we can put in projects and, and trip reports and so forth. All right. Moving on from communication, just wanted to give everyone a quick update. I know it's kind of been a big talking point it was a uh, proposal for formation repairs within the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, I'm happy to report uh, that yesterday there is a group of seven members of the Pecos Valley Grotto, uh, a company, Ellen Trotner, representing the Bureau of Land Management and also the PBG uh, on an initial reconnaissance mission to Sand Cave, uh, which was highly productive. Um, so the photo here, on the left, I'm going to give credit to Matt Armio, who uh, successfully made the first match for this project. Uh, in total, I'd say maybe a dozen or so definitive matches that if we had the equipment could be successfully repaired as early as tomorrow or whenever the next trip is. 
Um, so definitely some fruitful results there. As you can see with the other picture, some of them are, are quite large stalagmite formations that have pretty clean breaks that should be pretty easy to epoxy. Uh, but the project doesn't end there. Um, there's the potential for a lot more trips. Uh, a lot of the rooms that we move through rather quickly uh, have a lot of potential with broken matches uh, and work to be done. So um, there should be numerous trips throughout the next few months that I'll work on scheduling with Ellen and making sure anyone that's interested in learning these skills and uh, wants to go to Sand Cave, maybe hasn't been to Sand Cave yet, those opportunities are available for anyone that wants to participate. So um, stay tuned for, for those updates and, and trips scheduled. Any questions about that? Uh, I've also got the uh, actual proposal kind of linked here in the PowerPoint. So if anyone hasn't like seen like what that works looks like on our end, uh, what I submitted to Ellen for the Bureau of Land Management with kind of the logistics, um, you know, feel free to let me know. I'm more than happy for your advice and feedback on the paperwork. Uh, and definitely, uh, as always, a big thank you to Mike Manser for getting this project started in the first place and sharing all this knowledge so we can continue giving back to these underground spaces. Do you want to shoot that song? I'm proud of you guys. Go out and go get them. All right, so the next order of business, uh, I can move the, the Zoom here really quickly. Uh, we have an updated event coming up, which is going to be River Blitz here in the town of Carlsbad. Uh, so if anyone is available on Saturday, March 4th, uh, from about 7 in the morning to 11, so just a few hours out of your time, uh, to donate back to the community would be much appreciated. Uh, Dever is going to be kind of heading it, representing Nickery. I'm going to do my best to get a few hours off of work to participate, uh, help out with Carlsbad Caverns and also with the Pecos Valley Grotto. Uh, essentially, River Blitz is where, you know, folks come together and, you know, help clean up the Pecos River here in Eddy County. So um, certainly anyone that's in the local community knows there's, a, you know, a lot of work to be done with that. Uh, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m., uh, the meeting spot is going to be at the Riverwalk Recreation Center, uh, which is 400 Riverwalk Drive. I can also get that address to anyone, um, you know, via like Apple Maps or Google Maps, if anyone is interested. That'll be kind of the centralized meeting place for everyone participating. And then uh, the folks running it, they keep Carlsbad beautiful, and, and some of the city organizers are going to assign different locations to groups uh, right there. So... Um, that'll be where you want to meet. Uh, if anyone needs a little bit more convincing to participate, I hear lunch is going to be provided for everyone. So free food is always a good incentive. Uh, and you can always uh, reach out to myself or Deborah directly if you have any questions. Um, but I hope we can get a ter good turnout. Yeah. Is it Pizza Pizza, right? uh, yes, so fast. If you guys want to share like, what the experience is like for all of us to have it. Well, uh, they uh, put a bunch of uh, garbage collection sites out and uh, all up and down the river. I mean, we we uh, very lucky we spent some time in the water sometimes to clean it uh, where other people can, but they provide gloves and little uh, grabbers for everybody. And uh, I mean, it's just, you fill two, three of those long giant trash collections and it's, it's pretty awesome, it feels good. Yeah, if you don't already have like a spot kind of on the river already picked out, when you meet there at the Riverwalk Rec Center, they have a bunch of, you know, spots to say, oh, well, you could go here or go here. And and those spots, yeah, have all the like temporary dumpsters and stuff set up there so you don't have to, you know, yeah. travel to drop off the trash or anything. It's, it's usually a pretty big deal. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people. Wow. Yeah, last year was apparently 320 people showed up. The year before it was over 400. Yeah. yeah. So it's fun. It is fun. <laughs> So folks on the Zoom can hear just some updates from the room uh, from Ellen and Foz who have participated in the past. So usually a few hundred folks turning out. A lot of supplies provided, big trash bins to put the stuff, grabbers, gloves. So um, 
hopefully a small thing, a few hours that we can spare to help out the community and the karst landscape around us. Hope to see some folks there. Uh, I know in January and maybe a few weekends ago, Michael Moffitt had prepared a, a ridge walking project up in the, the high guads. Um, so I know he's not able to join us, uh, but if there's anyone either in the room or on the Zoom that participated in that project and wanted to give a little bit of an update or, um, yeah, Jen, I'm sure you're pretty involved with that as well. Uh, if, if there's any update to give. Um, so I think he split it into two weekends and I went to the first weekend and we were uh, just starting on White Mill Ridge and we had, I think, four groups of four. They were there. Um, four groups of five? Five groups of four. <laughs> There's a lot of people. Um, and uh, it was pretty good. Uh, I think they found one possible um, hole um, that's a, a new one. And but it was mostly just just hiking around. Um, and then the next weekend, I think he had. Smaller, you yeah. uh, I think eight people we split into. Uh, we didn't find anything major. It was cold, yeah, uh, cold and snowy and windy. So, but we we walked around uh, 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 for like Canyon, some, somewhere the water tank or something. The water tank, we, yeah. there was a sink already known in small sink there, so we saw that, but we couldn't see anything else. We followed the linear and we followed oh, no, uh, yeah. So mainly it was the new, new, the new, 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 or the next one. I, he's, he's buying a house right now, so sure. he's busy. <laughs> well, thanks for the updates in the room. Uh, just to recap, if you can quite hear, um, Jen Foote and Isam were given, given some first-hand accounts from helping out. Uh, sounds like over two weekends, there may have been about 30 or so participants who braved some cold weather, uh, hiking around up in the high guads with um, you know, a good time, good you know, good outdoors recreation, maybe one possible hole that was being found, uh, a lot of other kind of sinkhole areas that have been previously been known about, but still good to have that kind of confirmed in the data and the map. There may be uh, the potential for future trips if anyone's interested, but they haven't yet been scheduled. And then Michael Moffat will be the point of contact for that moving forward. So be on the lookout for that if it's something you're interested in. Um, anyone else want to offer some some input or feedback? Uh, oh no, this is just kind of uh, you know business, but um, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, transitioning on, uh, I know I'm put Hunter on the spot and also Deborah, uh, nice enough to offer their house uh, for some vertical rope practice for at least the, the last two weeks or so. Aaron Lynch helping with that as well. And Esam, um, you know, offering his insight and also his house for that possibility to happen. So we appreciate it. Uh, that is going to continue moving forward. That's the plan. At least uh, it seems like Monday nights, uh, obviously weather pending on that. Uh, and, you know, different availability or, or cancellations could occur at the last moment, but at least Monday nights are the plan to uh, have folks come out and practice, you know, vertical skills or learn vertical skills for the first time. Uh, the Pecos Valley Grotto does have two complete vertical kits at that house that folks are more than welcome to use uh, for these practice sessions or check out uh, if you're, you know, going on a caving trip uh, in the future and need that equipment. So always good to know that exists. Uh, we appreciate having a place to practice, you know, climbing, descending, changeovers, opportunities for rebelays. Uh, there's a full ropes course there. So take advantage. And kind of piggybacking on that, uh, there is going to be some cartography classes uh, hosted by Devra with the hopes of maybe doing some more surveys. So uh, still the plan for Tuesday nights moving forward. It's also just to give a case map you want to work on. Mm -hmm. We just also, we, you know, we'll do some practice and it's mostly bring your computer. Um, we'll go to, if, we, if it's more of a lesson, we'll go to the next room, but it's like a movie. It's more, it's like cave data and a movie night. 
Cave date in a movie night, I like that. So, so Tuesday nights, kind of like a casual hangout, bring your computer, bring a cave map to work on, uh, bring curiosity uh, and knowledge to share with other folks or, or the ability to learn new skills. And if you don't have a cave map, we will give you data to practice. Yeah, cave maps not required, plenty of data to practice with. So um, some exciting kind of weekly things uh, coming on. Oh, I said it's like movie data night. Movie yeah. data night instead of movie date night. Oh, it's still a movie date night. <laughs> movie data night instead of movie date night. I so love it. <laughs> and Sonia just arrived. All right, well, since Sonia just arrived, uh, it, we can put a pause on this. And uh, if you want to take control and do the official presentation, uh, we appreciate your time. Hi, everyone. It's uh, good to be back. Um, I'm opening up the presentation now. It's taking a minute to load. Yeah, you have to stop sharing. Yeah, getting there. Well, it's okay because my PowerPoint is taking its sweet time to open. Well, whenever you're ready, the uh, the Zoom is ready for you to share the screen. Thank you. Okay. Um, so before I get started, um, I just wanted to get a feeler in the room for um, people's knowledge of the NSS, people's um, concepts, preconceptions, um, anything you know about like the the structure of it? Yep. Yeah. I know Deborah knows a lot, so I'm gonna hold off unless on her unless no one speaks. <laughs> yeah, Sonia, if you want to repeat the question, uh, I didn't have the mic close enough to my laptop here, so now the room. Oh, are you guys better. in person? Uh, yes, partially in person, partially in Zoom, uh, kind of a hybrid. Um, okay, cool. Can everyone hear her okay? This, yeah. okay. Yeah, the question was, um, can you share with me your uh, impressions of the NSS, what you know about the NSS, anything about the structure or the governance? And it's, there's like a president and some executive officers, and then there's also a board of governors. Okay, that's impressive. That's more than I expected to get. <laughs> well, there were a few of us in the room that, that kind of hand gestured about uh, like very little knowledge of the NSS. So a little bit of a mixed bag here. I know for myself, I'm pretty new to the caving community, uh, and it's very little about knowledge of the NSS. Okay. Uh, who knows a lot? We do have a former board member here in the room and Jen Foote. So uh, like I said, a varied uh, level of experience and knowledge. Okay. Does uh, maybe the former board member would like to say something? Who Who is it in case I know them? <laughs> uh, it's Jen Foote. Oh, Jen, I didn't realize you were on the board before. Yeah. You want to share what your experience was like on the board? <laughs> Put on the spot. Yeah. Hey, Jen. I think we're getting feedback with the, the mic there. Uh, yeah, I was on it. I'm not really sure when. I think more than 10 years ago. Um, and uh, it was a, a different time. Uh, there was a lot of fighting going on between some of the vice presidents. Um, so it was quite an experience. It'd be like hundreds of emails a day. You'd go to a meeting, come back, and you'd have 50 emails with people um, fighting with each other. So um, yeah, it was, it was quite an experience. And it was right before uh, the headquarters vote happened. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a special time, but... Uh, yeah, learned a lot about how the NSS works, and uh, I'm glad to see things are proceeding quicker and more efficiently now, I would guess, like things are actually happening. Mm -hmm. So that's nice to see. Yeah, thank you for sharing your experience and perspective. I'll be very curious on your feedback after my presentation. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so I, I had also heard in the past that things on the board could be quite contentious. So um, Sorry. I think we've definitely improved in that aspect. Um, our current board of executives are very harmonious, um, which I suppose I take for granted because for the most part, it's been harmonious since I started. <laughs> um, okay, so let me share my screen. Um, so I want to give an update on what the NSS has been up to. Um, I'm going to cover, I'm going to focus mostly on governance, but um, there's a, a ton of activities that the NSS is up to. Um, but so to talk about the governance, you need to understand the structure a little bit. So you guys are right. There's a board of governors, which has 12 membership elected directors. And so that's what I am. Um, I was elected three years ago. So it's a three-year term. I'm coming up on the end of my term. Um, I am not planning to run again because I had a baby and uh, life is just a little bit too much right now to handle more responsibilities. So I will not run again. Um, but I'm very excited for the direction that we're moving. And if anyone is interested in running for the board of governors uh, or for, sorry, running as a director, uh, definitely like let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. It's um it's pretty rewarding what you do. Um, it can be frustrating at times. Uh, like Jen said, you know, things pop up that are, you know, <laughs> are frustrating. But generally it's um the ship is moving forward and uh, I think we're making a lot of progress. So the directors are responsible for financial oversight, electing officers, updating and writing acts and bylaws, and strategic planning. And then we have five director elected officers that serve a one-year term. And those, those are five offices. So we have the president, executive vice president. Uh, and so the president does PR and governance and they do a lot more, but I was trying to keep it concise. Um, the EVP does publications and science. The OVP is IT, the headquarters building and the office staff that work at the headquarters building. Uh, the AVP covers a crap ton of stuff. And this is like the, the craziest officer position in my opinion. So we have education, which Devra uh, runs, uh, NCRC, VTC, which is the new vertical training commission, and then convention and preserves. Um, so each one of those departments under the AVP is like pretty huge. <laughs> and then we have the secretary treasurer who uh, is really just a treasurer. And then we have a 600 page board manual, which um, contains all of our bylaws. And then beyond the uh, elected uh, leadership, we have volunteer driven committees. Um, and like I mentioned above, we have two paid office staff and everyone else is a volunteer, including the president, all the vice presidents, all the directors. And I think, um, I'll talk about the challenges of this, but I think it's really beautiful um, that the NSS can run and do so much purely on volunteer driven power. I think it speaks to our commitment as a caving community and our passion uh, for everything that we do. Um, but there are some, there's some issues with having volunteer driven committees um, or even just, you know, you know, directors are volunteer driven too. Um, and that is that we're not paid. Um, a lot of us, if not most of us, I think would have full-time jobs, family, you know, personal obligations, caving <laughs> trips, you know, um, that kind of sometimes get in the way. And we do have some really, really dedicated uh, volunteers, um, but sometimes life just gets in the way and that's not anyone's fault, but it is a challenge when you're a volunteer, right? It's not your top priority because you're not getting paid you got to do what pays the bills. Um, so that's one of our issues is uh, retention, uh, commitment on committees sometimes. Um, and then the 600 page board manual is a huge uh, barrier to entry for new directors. Um, I think it can be really challenging to become an effective director when you have such an intimidating document um, as you're coming in. And then the other issue I would say is that our, uh, Directors are elected by the membership, which kind of tends to be more of like a popular vote. 
rather than voting on uh, or name recognition, basically, rather than voting on skills and qualifications. Um, so sometimes we get people in there who are well-meaning, want the best for the NSS, but maybe don't necessarily have the right skill set um, to be a director um, or that you know strategic long-term thinking. And then with the officers, uh, their terms are very short. So um, you know when you have a longer term, you have more commitment and a longer time frame to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Sorry about that. Um, so that's those are a couple of our issues. And then additionally, our board is quite large. So the 12 directors plus the five officers is a board of 17. Um, and that's pretty large for nonprofit industry standard. So um, we have a plan that we're, we've been working on as the board. And uh, the main idea of the plan is to hire a paid executive director. Um, of course, this won't fix all of our issues. Uh, like I mentioned, there's a lot of structural issues with simply the way uh, that we're organized. So we want to, what we're currently working on is changing the structure of governance so that when we hire an executive director, they can be effective. And this is where I'm interested in what uh, Jen has to say, because we had an um, executive director exploratory committee do a ton of research on what it would take to um, hire an executive director, what it would take for them to be effective. And they interviewed the past leadership of the NSS. And one of the things that they found is that a lot of the same problems have plagued the NSS for decades. So like a lot of the complaints that we currently have today, people complained about like three decades ago or even five decades ago. Um, so it's really interesting that the problems kind of haven't changed. And I think that has to do largely with the structure because it's, it's built that way. So um, in addition to hiring an executive director, uh, we want to change the structure of our board to a more standard nonprofit structure. So part of that is reducing the size. We'll go from 17 to 12. Uh, and this is um, this is not 100%, but this is the kind of proposal that we're working towards. Uh, so we'll have nine uh, membership elected directors, which will be the same as before, uh, but a smaller number. And then instead of officers, we'll have three appointed directors and they will be directors, not officers. And this will um, this will ensure that the board has the appropriate uh, expertise that we need to function. So like some board members uh, have incredible institutional knowledge. Um, you know, maybe they were previously officers, so they really know how things run. Um, so that kind of knowledge is really important to have and retain on the board that we can't always get when we purely have membership elected directors. Um, and then the director elected chair of the board uh, will, so the executive director would report to the chair of the board. Um, in our current structure, we don't have a clear hierarchy of who any of the you know, officers report to. Um, they kind of report to the entire board so imagine you're a volunteer with like 12 bosses, you know, bosses, so to speak. Um, and your 12 bosses don't always have a shared unified vision. So it can be really confusing uh, to know what to do, to know what direction they want you to move in. Um, so with the new structure, we would have a chair of the board and the executive director would, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one reporting directly to the chair of the board and that will be like a very clear uh, relationship. And then the five officer positions would become departments and they would report to the executive director. Um, so our, our now new paid, our new proposed paid positions would be the executive director, the two office staff, which is the same as before. And then the convention planning and accountant aren't entirely like new, like we passed those acts I think last year, but they're effectively new positions because it's new, you know, to to the NSS, but it is already enacted in the bylaws. But we are planning to have um, part time convention planning people and uh, accountants to help us, you know, with the our big, big events. So uh, that's the proposed change. 
and what we've done so far to uh, get there. So I mentioned we had the Executive Director Exploratory Committee, and they produced a incredible comprehensive um, analysis of you know, all the decades of leadership, um, as well as they also interviewed other um, similar um, similar like membership associations that are like us, like the American Alpine Club and other outdoorsy membership associations. Um, we have, and this is, I think, a really important piece, identified a funding source in perpetuity. So um, we recently had received several large uh, bequests from our members, and we set aside a portion of that, and the interest from that uh, funding source will fund the executive director in perpetuity. So that is pretty incredible. Um, so the money for this will not be coming from dues, uh, which is good because I know everyone's always concerned about increase in dues and where the dues money going. Um, we have examined every act and bylaw in the 600 page manual. The board has been meeting twice a week for I don't know, several months to meticulously go through every single act and archive the ones that are no longer relevant, change the language to uh, include an executive director. Uh, we've created a new org chart and we're working on job descriptions for important roles. And then the next steps as we see it are a full legal review for everything we've done, um, educating membership and gaining support and then uh, contracting a nonprofit executive recruiter. And then of course, finally, hiring an executive director, um, as well as you know, um, performance management, right? Metrics for success for the executive director and constant uh, feedback loop for that. So um, that's the main thing I wanted to share um, about what the, the board is doing. This is a really big change that's coming down the pipeline. Um, there's been talk about it for a long time. Um, I'm really proud of the progress that our board has made towards this um, and will continue to make even when I get off, <laughs> get off the board. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'd love to hear anyone's feedback, um, their thoughts and opinions. <laughs> Well, we thank you for that. Uh, is there any kind of questions or comments from the room about anything that Sonia has presented for us? Yay, new org chart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Getting there. A contract position for the executor for a certain number of time, and then we have like a reevaluation thing, or is it more like yeah. they get it? Yeah, uh, Hunter Klein in the back is asking if, uh, you know, the executive director, if it's going to be kind of like a more of a, a contract or a time limited position, or is it just kind of uh, like a permanent hire uh, and they just have the position until they don't want it? Yeah, um, you know, we're not quite there yet, but I do imagine it would be a standard employment. So they would be hired and, um, you know, standard performance management if they're not. Uh, meeting standards, they you know would get fired, but hopefully we don't get to that point. I'm uh, I'm really optimistic that we're going to hire like a really uh, well qualified person, um, and then of course if they choose to move on, it's you know standard at well employment. Kind of curious on the whole officer the department heads because um, yeah. like we used to have you know because there's no officers and now it's going to be directors, but you are you going to get rid of like the officers and then you'll just have the conservation division, the, um, the education division, publications, or what, um, or are you going to keep it as operations secretary, you know, because the secretary, because you now have an accountant. So how will that change in the structure? Yeah, so initially we're gonna, the five officer positions will just become department heads. And we do have a transition plan so that um, in the short term, the department heads can also, you know, be 
uh, direct, like the officer directors. Um, but eventually we want to move to a place where um, the positions are completely separate and that the department heads are just on the operational side and the directors are just on the, the board side. And that's another thing about the NSF structure that's very non-traditional is that our officers are operational and in the strategic planning side of things. So that's an unusual um, setup. So um, yeah, I think in the immediately, it'll just be a direct translation. It'd be like department of, you know, executive vice president and so on. Um, but I do think that um, down the pike a reorg would be good because like I mentioned, the AVP uh, department, right, is huge and really disproportionate to the workload of other department heads. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think a reorg would be would be appropriate at some point. It, it sounds to me like they're evolving away from cavers being part of the quote ruling class. Is that true? I mean, that's the impression I get. Um, I, uh, sorry, I don't quite know how to answer that. Um, I, I don't think that's true. Um, like all the directors, you know, everyone's a caver. Um, the only person that potentially would not be a caver would be the executive director. Um, we are not at the hiring stage yet, but um, I think we're all open to a non-caver being an executive director simply because we want to make sure they have the right skill set. Um, I think it'd be great if we could find someone with the right skill set that was also a caver. Um, but, you know, we kind of just have to, you know, we have to put it out there and see what applications we get and, uh, you know, things like that. But in terms of the Board of Governors, like, you know, all all of the directors are cavers, all the officers are cavers, everyone that um, volunteers on any of the committees are cavers. So I would say it's definitely like 99% cavers. And like even our office staff, I think, I don't know if they were initially cavers when they were hired, but, and actually Devra knows the office staff better than I do, but I definitely feel like they're cavers now if they weren't when they were hired. <laughs> They um they've always most of them I think Michelle is still part of the community like the local community and so like that shelter came is still something that was is my understanding so they they are still community members and too um, and that's why they got the wanted to be part of the position from my understanding but not either yeah I don't I haven't met the new person yet yeah I haven't either obviously. <laughs> No, so I would just say is that with that many cavers on the rest of the committees and boards of this is that there's so much passion there that that one guy or girl that's going to be the executive director is going to just make sure there's an NSS for, you know, for a long, long time, a long, long time, because cavers may not think about that as a organization is to make sure that's here forever. Yeah. You know, you know? because we're going to have a lot of passion in these people working still the same, I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And like, I think the passion is great. Like I have so much passion for caving, but my personal life is just getting to a point where I can't devote the time, you know, because I have work and school and family. Um, and, you know, as we have a, a paid staff person to, you know, keep people driven and it's like their sole focus is to keep on, you know, keep the mission of the NSS going and that long-term vision, I think it's really important. I think the way things are going and moving, especially with the pieces where, where like what you guys are doing with like institutional knowledge and I'm halfway blame Carol in a good way. It's like, they're starting to be more written down um, mm -hmm. starting with the volunteer descriptions and like doing the, that alignment. Mm -hmm. It makes it easier to pass down and create more of a mentorship structure absolutely still a lot to go <laughs> yeah and that's we want we're trying to do some of that before the executive director is hired right because if we just hire someone in with no institutional knowledge written down 
we're kind of like, where do I start, right? So we're trying to get things in place in good shape with having an org chart, with having job descriptions. Um, so for, you know, since we have some people here that are familiar with the board manual, one of the things that we're doing is anything that's operational, we're pulling it out and putting it into like an operational manual so that the board, um, the BOG manual is literally just about governance and not like an archive of every single act or every single like, you know, rule that um, that the officers are supposed to follow or some committee chair or whatever, because it can get pretty granular in the in the board manual as I'm sure, you know, anyone who's, who's familiar with it knows. <laughs> Oh, um, can you share about who can go to the Board of Governors meetings? Everyone is welcome at the Board of Governors meetings, and I encourage all of you to attend. It's a great way to learn more about it. Um, I highly encourage um, anyone who's interested in volunteering. Um, it's great if you have, you know, these kind of... Um, so, like, you know, financial oversight, you kind of need to have a an understanding of financial documents. Um, electing officers, I think is pretty straightforward, you know, just selecting good people for the role. And honestly, part of electing officers is actually recruiting officers, um, you know, talking to your community, getting people to run. Um, for updating uh, an acts and bylaws, it helps if you are, you know, we don't have legalese per se, but it can kind of be like dry writing. So if you have experience with, um, with legalese, so to speak, that would be helpful. Um, strategic planning. Uh, so, you know, just you have to have a vision for the NSS and long-term thinking. Um, so I think that's that's what I personally think is valuable in a director. Um, that being said, we <laughs> are usually short on people running. So I really highly encourage anyone to run that's interested. Um, we also have a mentorship program. So once you're on the board, you'll get paired with someone um, to help you, you know, learn to navigate everything and how to be an effective director. Um, another thing that we did uh, is create a new uh, director like welcome guide because um, people used to just go in cold. <laughs> um, so we have like a welcome guide on on how to write acts and how what to do at your first meeting and things like that. Um, but anyways, for attendees, anyone is welcome to attend. The only portions that are closed uh, to membership are um, we have a closed session of the board and the directorship uh, in which we would, you know, meet privately and then we report back anything that's happening. But everything else is public and you're more than welcome to attend. So, yeah, this is Ellen. I just want to say first, it's really great to hear from you. I'm glad yeah. you're doing well. and and yeah, I just admire the time commitment you all have put in over the last, I don't know how many years I've been hearing talk about yeah, doing this um, executive director thing and hearing you say you've been meeting two times a week for a year. Oh, man, so thanks for doing all of that on behalf of the NSS. That's really awesome. And then kind of a follow up because um, I, I don't know if everyone who's in this meeting knows you, but that you have a connection to Carlsbad. And I was just wondering if you wanted to just real quick kind of share um, your connection to Carlsbad and your, your time here. Yeah, sorry. I guess I should inter um, introduce myself a little bit more at the beginning. Um, but I was an intern at Carlsbad Caverns, and I worked with Ellen. So it's really good to see from you. <laughs> I wish I could see you, <laughs> but it's good to hear from you. Um, yeah, and so during, I was here for a summer, I did um, research on carbon dioxide in the park. I was a mosaics uh, in science intern, um, and it was a really great summer for me, one of the best summers of my life. I had so much fun. Uh, I attended the PVG meetings, and at that time, uh, Dave Brumbaugh was on the board, or sorry, was the president, and um, I always felt like Dave had a really strong connection to the NSS. He always, um, I don't know if you guys still do this, but he would always have like an NSS, like what is the NSS up to in the grotto meetings, which I had never seen in my own grotto meetings in Virginia and California. Um, so I thought that was really great. I don't know if that's still going on. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think at that time I was not on the board 
Um, but I think that helped introduce me to some of the things that the NSS was doing. And then um, later someone on the board asked me to proxy. Uh, my daughter's behind me. Hi. <laughs> um, but someone asked me to proxy and I was um, just so amazed by what the NSS did prior to that, I thought, I thought of the NSS mostly as just running the convention. So that's what I was trying to ask, like people's preconceptions. <laughs> Hi, baby. Mouse. Yeah. So I and I was just like really blown away by the conservation work, the education work, all the preserves, how many volunteers they had and how much they do just because they're passionate about it. I just I thought it was beautiful and amazing. And that's kind of what inspired me to uh, run for the board. And I still think it's powerful and amazing what, you know, not just the NSS, but all the individual people that comprise of it. So, but yeah, so I lived in Carlsbad for a summer and I really miss it. I miss you guys. And I'm jealous that you all live there. <laughs> What's up, me? <laughs> yeah. Well, you're more than welcome back anytime. Uh, and I'm sure anyone in this room would be happy to to go caving with you whenever it is uh, you find your way back here in the Guadalupe Mountains. Uh, I gotta wanna piggyback on uh, something that you just mentioned uh, what Dave Brumbaugh did with the grotto meetings. I'm totally gonna steal that. What is the NSS up to? Uh, but since you're here uh, outside of this kind of restructuring as a kind of a leadership, um, could you offer some insight as to like what the NSS is up to like now? Yeah, I, I actually had meant to do a little bit more oops, research on that to prepare myself because there's so much stuff honestly and I, I'll share with you the best way to find out um, the so we meet three times a year with the board meetings and we each of the officers put out reports about what they've been up to and um, like I mentioned the AVP is a big department so that report is usually like 60 pages um, but that's so as a as a member, that's the best way to keep tabs on everything the NSS is up to. Um, so you can find that on the um, like the governance section of the website. Um, it'll be in the meeting minutes, and it links to all of the officer reports. Rock, can you show the rock? Rock. rock. <laughs> um, but yeah, things off the top of my head. Uh, we have convention in West Virginia this year. Uh, I think it's going to be a really awesome one, and that's in June. Um, the Vertical Training Commission is a new initiative. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it. Um, and is anyone familiar with it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they just said, yeah. Do you want me to talk about it? You guys. Uh, I think you probably know more than me, so feel free to. Yeah, they just finished writing their intro curriculum, um, and so they had a practice trial run recently. Um, when I'm trying to remember where, somewhere in the east, and so they, um, so they're still doing the revisions, and so they are. It's a uh, teach the teachers mode, uh, um, um, and so they are working on, as I said, the curriculum and working out the bugs and. So hopefully within the next year, um, we, it'll be something where people from a grotto can go and create help with learning a, new, uh, a training curriculum and you can have that kind of piece and bring it back home to your grotto. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, let's see, we have a new fundraising chair. So you guys might start to see more like fundraising campaigns coming out. Um, but our newest fundraising initiative is um, a vertical training tower at the headquarters. Um, so it's going to be based in honor of, um, oh gosh, I want to say Bill Cuttington, uh, Vertical Bill, um, who's the you know father of the uh, single rope technique in the U.S. So that's uh, pretty significant. He recently passed away, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll be a big initiative. And um, hopefully that's a resource that can make the headquarters um, more valuable to our members, uh, as well as provide a training facility for NCRC, VTC, um, grottos to use, uh, any events. 
Um, so we're really excited about that. And um, the funding structure that we proposed for it was that the NSS would match membership donations. Um, and that's our way of kind of making sure that any big financial uh, push by the NSS is actually supported by members, right? So if we get enough members to donate, then we can know like, okay, members really want this big, you know, want us to spend all this money and then we'll match whatever is spent um, or whatever is um, donated by members. Because, you know, in the, the past, the headquarters was, you know, I guess somewhat contentious. And uh, we just want to make sure that when we're spending a ton of money that we do have membership support to do that. Yeah. Um, I think that's, those are the things that are coming to mind for me. Well, I was going to ask uh, kind of how some of these bigger decisions that get made by the folks in your position and your colleagues uh, kind of trickle down and impact like local grottos and, and folks like us gathered here. And I guess you kind of touched on that um, with, with some of the, the NSS updates and, and kind of ways it's a two-way street. Um, is there anything else to, to add to that? Yeah, I think the relationship between grottos and the NSS is yeah. really interesting. Um, we have a, so grottos are called IOs, uh, internal organizations. And we had an IO committee that was doing uh, a newsletter pretty consistently. And, you know, I'm also um, in an executive position, a leadership position with my own grotto. And I felt like that was a really valuable tool. Again, volunteer driven, right? The person that was running it. Um, didn't have the time anymore, um, but I'm really hopeful that we can get that restarted um, and reestablish that connection uh, between the NSS and IOs, as well as like letting them know about resources that are available to them. Um, but yeah, I think the, the main connection really is that, you know, grottos encourage uh, members to join. Uh, I think the camaraderie of convention is really important. Um, I would love to see us get to a point where and the NSS does provide more resources to IOs, like um, you know membership retention strategies, diversity strategies, um, different programs, best practices across you know across the nation, things like that. Uh, but again, you know, volunteer driven. You got to find someone that's passionate about doing that, that has the time, and you know, it's an, just an appropriate place in their life. Um, so yeah, in addition to recruiting for <laughs> leadership positions, if there's anything that you want to see in the NSS, you know, volunteer and make it happen. What's up? Well, we certainly appreciate uh, the time you've taken to spend with us and all of your insight and putting the presentation together and answering questions. Uh, and then I am sure you have a busy evening, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So I'll, I'll give a final call for the room or anyone on Zoom if there's any any questions. Uh, and is it okay uh, if folks have follow up questions later on to kind of direct them to the email that we've been communicating with? Absolutely, I'd love to answer any questions cool. or just talk if anyone has any interest in volunteering in any way. Sure. Going once, going twice. Anything else for Sonia? I'm sure we'll message it down in the chat. Yeah, from Mike earlier. And the thumbs up for the voting. <laughs> so, nothing in chat. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Okay. It was good to see you guys. Bye. So I appreciate everyone's flexibility and also thoughtful insights and in adding to the presentation with questions. Um, we covered most of like the PVG business uh, before that. So uh, we can kind of wrap up with some opportunities for the future, uh, which timed up pretty good uh, in the grand scheme of things here. So I'll just kind of go back. Covered just about anything here, but is there any kind of old business, new business that anyone wanted to add? 
um, before before moving on. All right, so tribal opportunities, perfect transition since Sonia was talking about the, uh, the NSS convention. So I know that's kind of uh, coming up quickly in June on everyone's radar and I'll move this zoom off to the side. Um, so um, starting from the bottom up, uh, June 26th to 30th in West Virginia. Uh, I have never been to a convention. Hopefully you can arrange that with work time, but I know a lot of folks in the room have. So if you have any questions moving forward, feel free to reach out to your fellow Grotto members to ask for kind of like advice and opportunities. And there's a whole webpage on the NSS um, website devoted to conventions. So uh, hopefully the Pecos Valley Grotto gets some good representation there, but it is not the only travel opportunity. Uh, Phyllis forwarded this to me earlier uh, this month. Uh, the Pecos Valley Grotto got invited to the, the spring NRO. Uh, truthfully, I'm not really sure what NRO uh, stands for, for an acronym. So if anyone wants to fill me in on that, be appreciated. But an opportunity to go to upstate New York. Uh, Brian and I know it fondly. It's a great place to be, especially in June. Uh, Pattersonville is kind of rural New York uh, with some good caving opportunities. Uh, we were invited as a grotto by uh, the New Jersey Initial Response Search and Rescue, who are planning this event uh, from the email that was uh, sent to Phyllis and then forwarded to me, which if anyone's interested, I can send you all the details. There seems to be a plethora of caving trips, uh, both horizontal and vertical. Uh, one of the vertical trips mentioned like an underground waterfall, which seems pretty cool. Um, a gauntlet ropes course. There were some competitions, um, kind of like a squeeze through like a tight passage uh, competition type of thing. Uh, squeezing folks with like a litter through a tight passage competition. Uh, the zip lining with SRT skills across a lake seemed uh, pretty exciting for any Anyone interested and then you know rope races and all that so it seemed like there were both camping and rv and like hotel options so uh, if anyone is able to go i know it's a long distance to travel and uh and plan for especially if you're also planning on going to the nss convention but uh it could be a neat way to see some new places network with some other folks in the northeast and participate uh, in that in that regard. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I can put you in contact with the, the folks running it. Um, this N NJIRT seems to have a pretty centralized email address for planning on that. Um, any questions about, about travel opportunities? All right. Kind of wrap things up, uh, talking about any uh, past trip reports, upcoming trips, member news. Kind of the customary, uh, you know, final discussion slide, which I'll I'll open it up to anyone here in the room or online in Zoom. Yeah, so I've got a bunch. All right, Aaron, do you want to come up uh, into the microphone or? <laughs> or not? All right, this could be exciting. <laughs> also brought volunteer paperwork if anybody wants to fill out the paperwork over here. Oh my goodness, I am too short for this, like a little box to stand on or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, we're planning guano sampling for PD um, starting uh, the 27th of February. Uh, we'll be doing Lake of the Clouds and then Right Hand Fork. Um, and then that will continue uh, with Bat Cave on the um, March 21st. Uh, and then Ogle, Goat, and Lake of uh, 26th, 27th, and 28th. Um, like there's no flexibility in those dates. Um, and some of those trips are vertical and some of them require a respirator. Goat requires a respirator, Bat Cave requires a respirator and you have to be fit tested. Um, but uh, let me know if you're interested in any of those. Um, always lots of fun. Um, there will be radon uh, monitoring in uh, late March, early April. Um, and those trips are pretty open at the moment. We've got Lower Cave on March 28th, uh, Slaughter Canyon Cave on the 29th, um, uh, Hollow White Giants on the 2nd, uh, Christmas Tree and Highlands on the 9th uh, of uh, April. Um, 10th of April is Wen and Corkscrew. 15th of April is Chimney Cave. Um, 
Dan Pollock is going to come back to us very briefly, and he's going to plan some uh, big room pit cleanups, which should be lots of fun on the 30th and 31st of March. Um, let's see what else. I am also starting some. Oh, uh, Mike Manser has a bunch of trips uh, planned for spilium, spiliotherm repair in spider and music room and lake. Um, or no, I'm sorry, not I think spider is pretty much done, but music room and lake. Janice Tucker is organizing. Uh, uh, microplastic removal and restoration in spider and slaughter um, for the weekend of March uh, 4th and 5th. Um, so there's just a ton going on. Um, also, for those of you who can demonstrate that you can safely, efficiently, and with great confidence and skill pass a rebile, um, uh, we are going to be doing some rope replacement in Lechagia. Um, but there is like zero room for error. So everyone who goes into that cave must be very skilled vertically um, and demonstrate that they can pass a rebelay without any sweat or coaching. <laughs> I'm sorry? And deviations. And, and deviations. Yes, you must know how to do those and do them well and uh, be super safe. Um, any questions about any of that? Um, you can see me after this if you are interested in any of those trips or you can um, email me at my work email, which is just Aaron underscore Lynch at mps.gov. I would appreciate it if you didn't messenger me because that's like for personal stuff. Um, you can also text me on my work phone number, which I'm happy to give you. But please don't text me on my personal phone number. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for that, Aaron. Uh, I know there was a talk in the room of like maybe having like a, a physical list to, to distribute, which um, just heard Aaron mention that she'll put together and uh, hopefully pass on to me or, or to the grotto directly for everyone to browse at, because uh, I know that was a lot all at once, but a lot of really exciting opportunities. So um, anyone want to follow that up with any any opportunities or trip reports or such? Oh, yeah. Desperately need volunteers to help with cable camouflage just at Big Room Junction. I'm going to probably get up um, to get up sometime very, very soon because it's a super eyesore, but it'd be so awesome once it's camouflaged. Yeah, and Aaron was just adding for anyone that wants a kind of a more mellow trip, uh, lots of opportunities for cable camouflaging at uh, Main Corridor Junction and the, the Big Room of Carlsbad Cavern, probably led by Tom Bemis. So, um, also an opportunity to, to keep your, your ears out for moving forward. Hunter. Uh, just a heads up for people, like it's a little ways out, but in the summer, starting in June, I will be doing Saturday trips up in Colorado to some of my project caves. So just be prepared. It's cold, alpine, crawly caves, my favorite. <laughs> so there's some pretty stuff up there. You guys have seen my presentation for Colorado caves. So. <laughs> Uh, if anyone couldn't hear for Zoom in the back uh, over the summer, you say June? So. Starting in June, Starting in June uh, Hunter is going to be doing some more project caving up in Colorado, which is, you know, open for anyone in the PVG that wants to participate. Can you do your presentation again? Yeah. I've got a pre-packaged story. Sounds good. Well, now that you're the vice president, you can schedule your presentation anytime you want. <laughs> now for myself, uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago, Carlsbad Cavern was closed for visitors, which is always sad for some electrical updates, but it did offer an opportunity for staff to, to get more immersed in the resource. So uh, there were a whole plethora of caving trips that week for those employed at Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Uh, I myself led uh, a lower cave trip. I know there was a Slaughter Canyon cave trip, a few different lower caves, uh, left-hand tunnel. So uh, the more staff we can get in these places, uh, hopefully the quicker that the public tours will come back and uh, another way folks can experience the resource. And then everyone here is always open to volunteering to see those resources as well. Oh, and I guess also um, we will be doing more ridge walking trips coming up. Haven't had any dates decided yet, but there's some cool stuff going on in the forest. So 
I think y'all would want to participate. Some more ridge walking opportunities up in the forest uh, at a date and a location, and then TBD, but maybe some exciting potential for that. And are you going to talk about survey testing? I'll announce those on the. Okay. Email group because those are whenever we've got time. Okay. If you're going to go into the forest, I'd go early. Um, I would expect the forest to close early this this year. Um, if you haven't been up there, um, we're expecting a pretty big fire season, and uh, um, they don't close it in March. I'd be surprised. You know, by the end of March. You know, so oh, really? yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, if we don't start getting some water up there. True. Yeah, always a good safety update. Um, I, mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, you know, it's yeah. it's pretty dry up there. So yeah, yeah, especially after the you know the last summer that if we had. Get up there, I'm just saying we need to get up there early. Yeah. Just to have fun because I would I would be surprised. I appreciate that, Foz. Foz, do you know what the projections are for down like where the park is? Uh, just for this region right now, they're just saying, I mean, once we get out of this first little bit of the season, we should be good. I mean, we'd be early end, you know, maybe in June or July, we would, you know, we'd be out of the fire season. So uh, we just got to get through this because there's just, there hasn't been a lot of precipitation right now. It's super dry and big up there. You know, it's, it's bad. So that's all. Thank you. We just got to get through that. You know, we should be good. But got to be careful. There's a lot of people coming for spring break. I mean, that's what we just got to make it through. <laughs> we should be alright. And for folks on the Zoom, it's just a, a quick safety message and a reminder to to be safe with fire safety. And uh, you know, there's there's always chances. Uh, you know, places like the forest and and any of the park uh, could you know close for whatever reason. Uh, hasn't been a lot of precipitation, so it could be a an early and, and potentially uh, dangerous fire season. So something to factor in when planning trips and, and when you're camping out there and such. You know, for the most part, everyone's safe and responsible, but we gotta do our part. Anything else anyone wants to share? Oh, um, I know you're probably all interested in the backcountry trail situation. And there's a trail crew out working on slaughter right now, but they have not made a lot of progress. They've gone a third of a mile. Um, but uh, Park's hoping to open that up sooner rather than later, but uh, it'll depend entirely on how fast the trail crew can work. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily cave related, uh, underground cave related, that is definitely cave related in terms of the park. Uh, but there is a, a trail crew out at Slaughter Canyon that's doing some work. So for those interested in just doing some recreational hiking, hopefully that means good news. But there is still no time estimate uh, on opening up any of the, the backcountry trails at the National Park just yet. All right. Well, if uh, that concludes just about anything anyone has to share, that can officially wrap up uh, today's meeting. So um, once again, I uh, appreciate everyone's attendance and involvement on any of the projects you're working on, any of the trips, and uh, there'll be lots of opportunities coming up uh, this spring and summer. So an exciting time to be a member. Um, spread the word, invite your friends, pay your dues, go to River Blitz.